Hey guys, happy Tuesday. We got a rock and rolling uh, newscast for you today. It's so much going on and a couple of new things happening just before our newscast. So. Okay. Yeah, I can do that. Uh, I'll do that. I'll tease. We have a crew there and we'll have more information. Oh. Oh, I might mess up on the prompter by accident or on purpose. <laughs> you know your stuff. So what are we doing, guys? <laughs> I still don't know if we have a starting live shot. Do we have the live shot or not, guys? Hello, anybody? Still don't know if we have our live shot at the top of the newscast. Do we have the live shot or not? Thank you. And we are following breaking news in South Spokane tonight. A very active crime scene right now on the Moran Prairie. And a Washington State trooper just taken to the hospital with injuries. That trooper was one of several law enforcement officers chasing a suspected drunk driver late this afternoon. The chase ended just off Palouse Highway near 65th and Yale when that trooper and driver collided. KXY 4's Allie Norton working for you. She's live from the scene. Uh, Allie, what's the situation there? Can I ask her a question? Uh, say, Allie, real quickly, any road closures out there, like the Palouse Highway or anything like that? Okay. Okay, all right, thanks so much. Thanks a lot there, uh, Allie. We're also re just receiving word that Spokane police are right now searching for two missing children and their mother. 28-year-old Crystal Corton is wanted for custodial interference. Police believe that she has 11-year-old Princess Angle and 14-year-old Precious Courtness. She does not have custody of those children, and police are concerned about their safety. Anyone with information is asked to call Crime Check. There's the number 456-2233. And a warning if you have children watching tonight. Our next story contains graphic details and may be upsetting. Today in court, the jury was visibly shaken as they watched videos of a former VA doctor sexually abusing children. Now, Craig Morgenstern is charged with 35 counts, including aggravated sexual assault, production of child porn, and taking children across state lines for his own sexual gratification. Prosecutors found videos and pictures depicting those crimes, and today, the jury had to see them. KXY 4's Aaron Luna working for you tonight with day two of that trial. Aaron, sounds like a very unsettling day in court. At one point in the trial, the defense objected to the video, saying the jury had stopped watching. The prosecution argued the video showed key pieces of information, and the judge overruled the objection. I'll check in with you guys a little bit later. Lots of serious news going on right now, so I'm going to take a break and just concentrate on the show.
for the jury to watch. A search of Morgan Stern's desktop computer turned up at least 100, 100 images of child porn that the former doctor tried to delete, as well as five videos. Mm. And Aaron, we understand that the victim who escaped his home in Nine Mile Falls back in 2014 um, had to be taken to the ER? Yeah, that's where nurses performed a sexual assault kit. A urine test revealed benzodiazepine in the victim's system. Benzodiazepine is a type of drug used as a sedative or anti-anxiety medication. Prosecutors want to prove Morgan Stern used his position as a doctor to get those drugs to harm children. Nadine. All right, thank you for that. Another uh, sunny, crisp day. Uh, things are going to warm up, though, weather-wise. This is a live look over downtown Spokane right now. Beautiful. Uh, Sunny evening. I bet that sunset's going to be nice, too. This is a look behind the scenes right now in the KXY4 studio. There's Chris getting ready to do give you the forecast. You can join us on Facebook. We're streaming live and chat with us, too. So let's get to Chris with uh, what can we expect tomorrow. Another day very much like today and a cold start again tomorrow morning. Here's a look at our morning lows across the region. 23 in Spokane. That is the second coolest morning of the month so far. All right, thanks a lot, Chris. Spokane's medical examiner has ruled the death of a doctor found in the Spokane River was accidental drowning. Fire crews recovered the body of John Marshall near the Monroe Street Bridge last month. And that's where kxy 4 Jeff Humphrey joins us now live. Jeff, still, though, a lot of unanswered questions about Marshall's death. guys let me get through just a couple more stories and uh, be happy to chat with you there is Johnny behind me that would be John Henricks yeah he's got some oh what a pretty shot on Monroe Street Bridge he's got some news uh, it's not so crime driven as soon as we get through some of this stuff, I can talk to you a little bit more. Yeah, Josie, it has been a crazy day in news, I'll tell you that. Hmm. Oh, Laura, say hi to eight-year-old Kyler, Kyler, thanks for watching. Good to have you. Okay, got to get back to this here. Any drops here, Brian, or are we going with everything left in this segment? All right. Well, that's a beautiful shot. You are, okay.
Thank you, Jeff. New developments tonight in a fatal shooting outside the Palomino nightclub. 21-year-old Eduardo Villa Gomez, an EWU student, was killed last month when he was hit by a stray bullet. Today, prosecutors charge Anthony Williams, Kwame Bates, and LaShawn Jameson with first-degree murder. Prosecutors say they showed extreme indifference for others and could have hit more bystanders during that shootout. The three are also charged with 14 counts of drive-by shooting. Former Spokane City Councilwoman Nancy McLaughlin now Spokane's newest county commissioner. The 57-year-old Republican chosen last night to replace outgoing Commissioner Todd Milkey. Voters will choose a new commissioner in the November election. Until then, she says she wants to focus on economic developments. Well, could Spokane soon have two medical schools? KXY 4's John Hendricks working on that story, John. Well, Nadine Gonzaga and the University of Washington expected to make a big announcement tomorrow. Coming up, what we've learned could be happening. All right, Chris, a gorgeous night out there tonight. Isn't it beautiful? Yeah. There is more sunny weather <laughs> in the forecast. I will let you know what to expect up next. And speaking of sunny, well, it's time for KXY 4's Great Gas and Grocery Giveaway. It brings a little sunshine into your life when you win. Sponsored by Senex Zip Trip, Yolks Fresh Market, and Fred's Appliance. Tonight's secret word? Robin. Yeah, way to go, Robin. <laughs> for your chance to win $100 in gas and groceries, just go to our website, KXY.com, or the KXY 4 Facebook page. Click on Great Gas and Grocery Giveaway, and that's where you enter tonight's word. You can learn about all the rules and details right now at KXY.com. And... Take a look at this, a picture of one of our latest winners. That's Betty. She stopped by to pick up her winnings and say to hello to our Allie Norton. Congratulations, Betty, for winning, and thanks for watching. We'll be right back. Oh, Betty looks nice. Yeah. How you doing on time, Brian? Whew. What a first segment of news. I would be happy to do that. Thanks for helping out. My pleasure. Yeah. My pleasure. Oh, Anne is in Hawaii. Oh my gosh, Anne. I will be soon. Yeah, when do you leave, Chris? A few weeks. A couple weeks? Oh, how nice. Chris is taking a couple dozen of our viewers on a three, is it three islands you're going to? Yeah. Three islands she gets to escort and be the host of a great trip to Hawaii, so... That is awesome. Donnie, how are you doing, Donnie? Updates on the missing children. Well, we just got word that they're missing. So, Kelly, we will definitely update you um, just as soon as we get that. But we just found out before news time that police were looking for them. Let's see. Now I can get to some of these comments. My goodness. No, Chris, it is not easy to report on all this all the bad news and the crime but you know we've also got some good news we've got the KXOI4 Extreme Team update on their project out at Spokane Humane Society so we have some good news thrown in there too which is nice lots of people watching beautiful day Jennifer good to have you here and Doris thanks for watching Mike had a nice compliment Mike Ellis Mike Ellis is a great guy is always out there on social media spreading the good word about KXOI. Matthew, Matthew, thank you for your kind words. And uh, Justin, how are you doing? Bill and Connie, you're joining us again. I recognize you guys. If you could hear all the news too. Well, you know what? We do stream the five o'clock on uh, KXOI.com, so you could watch, watch there if you can't hear it on TV. And now it's time for weather.
Okay. 54 on Friday before the rain comes in on Saturday. Uh, looks like it'll mainly be mountain showers on Sunday with another chance of rain on Monday. Everybody's loving this weather, Chris. I'll tell I you that. I am. That's for mm -hmm. sure. Well, the KXY4 Extreme Team working hard at the Spokane Humane Society tonight. Our Mark Peterson leading that project. So, Mark, how's it going? So, does he take this out to the break? Yeah, he does. No, that looks great. Hey, look who uh, Joel is joining us. Joel, what the heck oh, are you doing? Joel. Up? My goodness. You're supposed to be getting Joel. some Z's. <laughs> Joel is our morning producer on Good Morning Northwest, so he's great usually producer. asleep at this time. Yeah, nice doing a good job guy. on that show. Get to know Joel. <laughs> Oh, yeah. because you're a hungry news hound. Oh, somebody want to know the first day of spring, March what? 20 something? What is it? I believe it is the 22nd. Okay. Meteorologists <laughs> go by March 1st. Well, it feels like Astronomers go by, it's either the, I don't know when the uh, vernal equinox is specifically, but I'll go look. Really? So meteorologists go by more just, just the calendar, just by the calendar? Yeah, or we, so I mean, we can't. We yeah. break it up. Spring is March. April, May, yeah, and okay. that's how we keep our records. Sure. All the NOAA records are used those months. And when you think about it, we are deep into the winter weather by the time winter hits. Yeah, oh yeah, exactly. You know, yeah. so it right. really, when you break it up into those three month blocks, it mm -hmm. makes a lot more sense. Yeah. And I mean, yeah, it does. Really, the people are much more Thank aware you of the what the weather is doing and the calendar than when the sun is directly so, over the tropic yeah. of cancer <laughs> that does not even yeah. uh, occur to me well i tell you though it's been great it's, it's sure been feeling like spring it feels like spring is sprung in the inland northwest santa cruz is watching jim how the heck are you lana kelly I, kelly's been with us uh ann in baby oh oh ann's missing baby no ann you're in hawaii do you live in Bayview? Bayview is gorgeous. I love Bayview. I do too. Sunday, March 20th. Oh yeah, Joel, see you in six hours. I hope you get some sleep, man. The 20th, you said? March 20th. Sure that's in our... All right. Wait, wait, nope. Nope. In this time zone, yep. it is March 19th. Oh, March 19th. There you go, guys. Official March 19th. John is going to be watching in Hawaii next week. Oh, Kauai. That is awesome. Yeah, well, the KXY4 Extreme Team making some huge progress at the Spokane Humane Society. That aging building was in desperate need of updating. And Mark Peterson and the crew are on week two now of that project. Mark is joining us live to show us those improvements. And boy, they're really going to help the shelter uh, better serve this community. And they do a great job already, but even more so. <laughs> so, um, let's see. Oh, you guys are commenting so much. I can't keep up with it. So, Russ wants to know where the money comes from, Extreme Team. You know, we do lots of fundraisers. We just had a fundraiser, the karaoke party at the Viking on Friday. Um, a lot of materials and labor all volunteered. So, you know, they don't have to have a huge budget. But uh, Mark's got a a number of great um, businesses that are willing to help out. So we have a small budget, mostly through fundraisers. Let's see. Weather is going to warm up, Debbie. Uh, looks like close to the 50s or in around the 50s by the couple more days here. Oh, Ann lives in Kona. Used to run Chris's floating patio. You live in Kona? Wow. How Good for you. Man. Goodness sakes. Oh, Kelly, March 21st is your birthday. My daughter's is March 19th. You guys are really close. Happy early birthday to you. Let's see. Hmm. Okay, here we go. Right. 
I gotta see this. I'm gonna check this out. The old Harley Davidson that uh, closed down on Trent had these cabinets. Yeah. We didn't have it in the budget to get new cabinets. Oh, we getting recycled. These. Yeah. We got, uh, and now Mario and nice. Sons. I just want to emphasize, Mario and Sons is today. We'll get the top done by Thursday. <laughs> Unbelievably fast. And we thank them for the donation. So that's what makes this work. When people come together yeah. and help us help those organizations. All of this thing happens. Absolutely. We're looking forward to that. The big reveal Thursday, so I know you guys have a lot of work to do between now and then. I trust you will get I trust you will get it all done. All right, thanks a lot. Okay. Well, hey, the Extreme team also has been receiving, uh, as Mark mentioned, all kinds of help with this project. And students from the Curlew Job Corps took a three-hour road trip to volunteer today. Those students are in a carpentry apprenticeship and said that they are excited to get some real experience. So tonight on KXY4 News at 6.30, we're going to see how these teens are making a difference on the job. We'll be right back. All righty. How are we doing for time? Oh, thank you, Missy. Oh, wow, that's amazing. I can't believe that. Okay. Okay. Wow. Super. On time. And the reason I asked is because we hit, we in, uh, added a number of, a couple of stories at the top of our show at the right before the newscast, so sometimes that'll skew with your time, but we are okay today. Skew, yes. Excuse you. Rob LaHaye is directing our show today. Oh. Okay, I won't. Rob doesn't want me to use his last name. He's in the witness protection program. <laughs> oh, um, Ananda's, oh, Ananda. We had a foster child growing up. And her name was Ananda, and uh, you don't hear very many Anandas. I love that name. So your brother is in the Curlew uh, Job Corps. That is very cool. I, is he? I wonder if he went to uh, the Spokane Humane Society to help out. Denise is watching in Minnesota. She misses and loves Spokane, Minnesota, Wilmar, Minnesota. Well, thanks for joining us. Debbie just moved from California. She used to watch Channel 7, but you like KXLY. Which, I wonder what channel Channel 7 is and where in California that would be, but welcome to the Inland Northwest, Debbie. Rob can direct my show. Oh, <laughs> Joel's talking to you on Facebook. Did you see that? I'm sure Joel would love to have you direct the show. But he, oh, no, he did say that, but he, he said you don't want to. <laughs> Hey, Brian. Thanks, Brian. Oh, I'm talking to And Brian's our show director, our producer. So. Well, welcome back to KXOI 4 News at 5 tonight. Here are some of the stories that you're checking out online today at KXOI.com. Oh, this video struck a chord with many of you. It's the most viewed at KXOI.com today. Now, this is the guy that Jeff Humphrey calls the donkey kick burglar because of how he kicked his way into someone else's house. Sheriff deputies think that Paul Hill is responsible for a half dozen break-ins in the Spokane Valley. And for the second day in a row, he told the judge he was too sick from drug withdrawals to appear in court. Well, could this be the year for Leonardo DiCaprio? That's what Vegas odds makers say. DiCaprio far and away the favorite to take home the Oscar for his starring role in The Revenant. That movie also the favorite to take home Best Picture. You can watch to see who wins during the Oscars broadcast. It's Sunday only on KXOI4. There's a new addition to the National Portrait Gallery, President Frank Underwood. Never heard of him? Well, that's because he's the president on the Netflix series House of Cards. Actor Kevin Spacey was at the Smithsonian for the unveiling Monday night. That's two weeks before the debut of the House of Cards season four. You can check it out for yourself right now at our website, KXOI.com. Well, Bloomies are rejoicing. The 40th annual Bloomsday race will be here before you know it. So are you ready? Well, race director Don Cardong unveiled the 2016 race poster today. Steve Merriman of Sigma Design created the poster. It features two Bloomsday finishers, their image made out of old race t-shirts, logos, and other art. 
Cardong says that it is hard to believe that Lilac City has kept this tradition going strong for four decades. Okay, are you guys doing Bloom's Day? I'd like to know. 40 years. Man, a long time. And are you training? Oh, Channel 7, ABC. Cool. <laughs> Bloom's Day organizers also announced a new app for your phone that should make race day easier. There are only 67 days until the starting gun goes off. Hope you're training. We'll be right back. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. 40 years. Oh boy, Roberto, not Alberto. Okay. Oh geez, Joel. Gotta plug your show, that's fine. Just plug away. Plug, plug away. No Bloomsday for Jasmine. Okay. Yeah, yeah, just gas it. Gas it. Okay. Joel, you do a great job on the morning show. You can promote yourself as much as you want during the five. We always do anyway. <laughs> who's, oh, who's there? John. The lovely and talented. The lovely and talented Johnny. <laughs> Call him Johnny. Okay, ABC LA. Thank you, Donnie. I was wondering what city. Well, LA, boy, yeah. Bet you were glad to get out of Los Angeles. I don't know. It's tough to be down there right now. It's so expensive. All that traffic. My son and his girlfriend were there two weeks ago. It took them from LA to Malibu like all day to get there to spend a couple, uh, an hour and a half on the beach. <laughs> but it's beautiful. It is very beautiful there, I must say. Synergy, Joel. That's what it's all about. You got that right. Synergy. Oh, Kelly, you know what? They have all kinds of volunteers for Bloom's Day. That would be, uh, I'm sure they would love to have you. Can't do it without all those volunteers. Forty-five? That's a lot of time. You're funny. You're a funny young man. <clears throat> Are you ready for this? Yep. Now, if I if I lose you on the prompter, just keep your scripts. I'll try. I don't lose them on the prompter. I think I only did that once to you, didn't I? That was actually fairly recently, because I have I'm talking on Facebook and I'm running your prompter and I'm anchoring. What more can I do, John? What more can I do? <laughs> Spokane's plans to become a hub for teaching healthcare workers could soon take a huge leap forward. Last year, WSU was given approval to move forward with a new medical school. Now the University of Washington may be following suit. KXY Force John Hendricks working for you and John, an announcement expected on this tomorrow morning. Yeah, Gonzaga and the University of Washington called a joint news conference for tomorrow, promising good news for Spokane's economy. For the past year and a half, the two have been Let's talking about a joint effort in bringing some type of med school to Spokane. Up. UW has had a med school presence in Spokane as part of a whammy program and has had plans to expand that. But with WSU opening its own medical school here, UW needed a new partner. That's the announcement we're expecting at Gonzaga tomorrow. Both schools are remaining pretty tight-lipped about the details mm -hmm. of that announcement. Gonzaga, however, did release a statement today saying University of Washington and Gonzaga University have been actively engaged in conversations over the past several months on how we can work together to advance a shared commitment to medical education and research in the Spokane region. Our discussions continue to be extremely productive and we look forward to sharing details once an agreement has been finalized. State Senator Michael Baumgartner was a driving force in getting WSU's med school funded. He told me today he wasn't certain what Gonzaga and UW were planning to announce, but says it sounds positive for Spokane. They were wanting me to mess up on the prompter, but I told them I couldn't do that to you. <laughs> Just joking. 
We know these talks have been going on for more than a year now. Gonzaga's president told KXLY GU could offer things like research opportunities and other ways to enhance that partnership. Tomorrow, both university presidents will be on hand. We will, of course, be there as well and let you know what both universities have in store. Reporting in studio tonight, John Hendricks, KXLY. All right, thanks, John. That's big news. We're going to have it tomorrow for you, too. And, uh, boy, beautiful evening out there right Isn't now. Isn't it a beautiful yeah. day? And we have more nice days ahead. Mm -hmm. 48 tomorrow and partly cloudy, mostly sunny Thursday and Friday with highs in the 50s. Rain on Saturday. Looks like mountain showers on Sunday. Those temperatures are above average, although that average high keeps climbing. Yeah, it's it in the lower 40s now. So nice. not too far off the mark. No, everyone's loving the weather. And our friends on Facebook tonight, we've been streaming live behind the scenes. We do it 5, 6, and 11. They're loving the weather too. Everyone wanting to get outside and get some of that vitamin D. Yes. Yeah. All right. That's going to do it for us at KXY4 News at 5. We're back in 30 minutes. We'll see you at 6 o'clock on TV and on Facebook. All right, guys, another five in the can. <laughs> We're back at six and at 11. Chris is hosting at six, so stop by and say hi, okay? <laughs> Bye. Bye.